In the last video, I introduced logical and relational operators. The outputs of these operators are logical values. They're a special type of data in MATLAB. So, if one of these operators outputs a value, MATLAB knows that the value is logical and treats it differently from numerical values in some ways. One of the ways is that logical values can be used as an array index. Using logical values as array indices can allow you to extract elements of an array which meet certain criteria, which is really pretty handy. Anyway, the topic of this video is using logical values to determine array elements which meet certain criteria. Up until now, I've only used positive integers as array indices. So, I can get a number that's in the third row and fourth column of an array by using the indices 3, 4. Also, MATLAB starts counting rows and columns with 1, so I haven't been able to use a 0 as an array index. This isn't true if I use logical values as array indices in MATLAB. If the index is a logical value, 0 is a legitimate array index. Since, in logical terms, 0 corresponds to false, sending a logical 0 as an array index means, in some sense, that you don't want that value. It's false, it doesn't meet whatever criteria you're using to select array elements. Any logical value other than 0, of course, corresponds to true. To MATLAB, this means that the array element meets your criteria and MATLAB will return that value. In the next slide, I'll elaborate on this and show an example of what I mean. As mentioned in the previous slide, logical values can be used as array indices to access selected array elements. There are two main ways to create logical values. As I showed you in a previous video, relational and logical operators both return logical values. You can also create logical values with the logical command. Let's look at an example of how this logical command can be used and how logical values can access selected array elements. For my example, I've created an array named IND containing these values. I can convert these numbers to logical values by typing logical of IND. These values are sent to the logical command and the logical command returns the logical variables corresponding to those. So any non-zero values are returned as ones and any zero values are returned as zeros. Now let's take a look at using these values to access specific elements in this A array. If I say A of logical of I and D, I'm taking this array and using it as an argument to A. It extracts any elements in A that correspond to logical ones. So I get 2, negative 4, 7, and 5 out of this command. Just to illustrate how the results look in MATLAB, I'll do a couple of quick demos of logical array indices. I'll create a vector of uniformly distributed random numbers between 0 and 1 by typing x equals rand of 1 comma 7 and pressing enter. Next, I'll round these numbers to the nearest integer by using the round command. So I'll type x underscore int equals round of x. I end up with an array containing only ones and zeros. These can be converted to logical values with the logical command. So, x underscore logic equals logical of x underscore int. Any non-zero values become logical ones and zero values become logical zeros. There is a difference between the zeros and ones in the x underscore int array and those in the x underscore logic array, even though they look the same. To see the difference, use the isLogical function. I'll type isLogical of x underscore int. A zero is returned, indicating that these values are ordinary numbers. Now, if I type isLogical of x underscore logic, I get a one. So the x underscore logic array contains logical values. This is also apparent in the workspace window where x underscore logic array is indicated as being a logical array. 
This difference is important since logical values are fundamentally different from numbers in MATLAB. For example, I can't use x underscore int as defining elements in the original a array of random numbers. If I type x of x underscore int, I get an error. However, x underscore logic works perfectly well as indices to the x array. If I type x of x underscore logic, I get back the elements of the x array corresponding to the indices that have values of logical 1 in the x underscore logic array. This really just corresponds to the values of the original x array, which rounded up to 1, which are just the values that are greater than 0 0.5. Since logical and relational operators automatically return logical values, they're really easy to use to extract elements of an array that meet certain conditions. You can apply the logical and relational operations to an array. The operators will return an array of logical values which indicate which elements of the array meet the logical or relational criteria. Ones are in the locations corresponding to elements that meet the condition, and zeros are in the locations where the elements don't meet the condition. This logical array can then be used to access the elements of the original array that meet the condition. For example, I have this array B in my workspace. The relational operation B greater than zero returns an array with ones in locations to positive values of B, there and there. If I use that array of ones and zeros as an argument to B, I extract the values here and C becomes 1 and 5. Now I'll do something similar to the last demonstration, but I'll use relational operators. Recall that the last time I created an array of random numbers between 0 and 1, and then used a rounding process and logical values to determine which elements of the original array are greater than 0.5. Now, instead of my previous approach, I'll just type x of x greater than 0.5. The arguments to the array x are defined by the logical operator x greater than 0.5. This operation returns a logical array that has ones where the values of x are greater than 0.5 and zeros everywhere else. When this is used to access elements of x, the returned values are the elements of x that are larger than 0.5. Logical operators can be included in these expressions. For example, to get the values of x that are between 0.25 and 0.75, I can type x of x greater than 0.25, an ampersand for and, x less than 0.75. The values of x that are both greater than 0.25 and less than 0.75 are returned. There's a command, find, which also allows us to access arrays which meet certain logical or relational criteria. Find returns the indices at which non-zero array elements occur. This is particularly useful if the array sent to the find command is logical, and probably even more useful if logical or relational operators are used to generate the array. As an example of this, I can create a row vector of five uniformly distributed random numbers between 0 and 1 with this command. This command finds the values in that array that are larger than 0.5. The find command returns indices where this condition is true, and using those indices as an argument to D extracts the values that are true or returns the values that are greater than 0.5. To use the find command to determine the indices of the X array that are between 0.25 and 0.75, the syntax is similar to what I used before. This time, though, I'll define a variable named index, which contains the indices of the appropriate values of x by typing index equals find of x greater than 0.25 and x less than 0.75. Now I can get the appropriate values by typing x of index. 
Of course, as before, I could condense this into one command by typing x of find of x greater than 0.25 and x less than 0.75. This video showed how to use relational and logical operators to extract desired values from an array. This is one form of decision making. You get certain values based on a decision that you make. In this next video, I'll introduce an even more powerful decision making tool, an if structure. The if structure allows you to conditionally execute sections of code based on conditions which evaluate to logical true or false values. So the general idea is that if this one thing is true, then do this, but if it's false, do something else.